Look, I don't know what the YouTube algorithm is doing lately, but I love that it's showing my videos to awesome people like you. People who are out there actively looking to get better at Valorant. The pure fact that you're out here finding and being recommended this type of content, I mean, you're already in the right mindset. So let's go. Today is for all you newcomers. Not just to the channel, but you brand new Valorant players out there. This video is for you. Today we're going to cover the foundations, the things that you need to know, which you can then start building upon in order to improve. There's no point us diving into the specifics of how to play controller or what duelists need to do to have an impact on the game when you don't even really know what a controller is and you're just running around the game dying all the time. I'm going to break today's video down into a few sections that slowly but surely build upon one another. And first things first, you're going to want to learn how to shoot. Shooting in Valorant is very different to basically any other game except for Counter-Strike. So if you've played Counter-Strike, Valorant might feel very familiar to you. In which case, great, you can probably skip this section. The key difference between Valorant and every other game is that you basically cannot move and shoot at the same time. Running and gunning, despite what some TikTok highlight reels might show you, doesn't actually work. In practice, this means that you need to stop moving completely before you start shooting. And you will need to practice this. This isn't a very natural mechanic, but you will learn it. It may just take some time. So get into the practice range or get into a death match and practice. Turn on the shooting error graph in your video stat settings and practice moving, stopping, shooting. You want the graph to show little to no errors. And you wanna build up the muscle memory needed in order to move, come to a complete stop, shoot a few bullets, then move again and repeat. And you will get faster and faster and faster at this over time. But this is the core mechanic of shooting in Valorant. Great, now you have the basics of Valorant shooting understood. Let's move on to the different types of shooting in Valorant. Now this should be an entire video in and of itself, which I actually have made already and I'll link it somewhere on the screen for you now. But I'll briefly touch on three types of shooting in Valorant and when you should or shouldn't use each one. Please note that all of this will become second nature soon enough, so don't stress too much at the moment if you're finding it frustrating or difficult. First, we have tapping, which is to say you tap your mouse button, which causes you to shoot one bullet at a time at a somewhat slow pace. The idea here is that your bullets remain a 100% accurate and you are shooting slowly enough so that you are not experiencing any recoil. Hold on, I need to explain Valorant recoil really quickly. You see, Valorant has a recoil reset system in play, which means that if you shoot bullets one after another in quick succession, each subsequent bullet has more and more recoil applied to it, up to the maximum amount of recoil for that weapon. Now this sounds technical, but all it means is that you can shoot like three or four bullets quickly, but then after that, the recoil kicks in and your bullets go a little bit crazy. And in order to start shooting accurately again, you'll have to wait a second or so for the recoil to calm down so that you can start shooting accurately. Now, when we're tapping, we want to make sure that we are never triggering that recoil. We want to shoot quickly, but not so quickly that we're experiencing any recoil. So that's a type of shooting you can practice called tapping great for long range fights and something you'll probably want to try and get really good at. Next up we have spraying. Now this is like the simplest and arguably least effective form of shooting in Valorant, but don't worry, I'm an immortal player who still can't help but spraying and praying because, well, I can't aim. Spraying is when you just hold down the fire button and try your best to move your mouse counter to the weapon's recoil. The good thing about Valorant is that your traces are accurately depicting where your bullets are going. So you can kind of move your mouse around and aim your traces at the enemy. So that's spraying. Great for close range engagements when you need to just fire off as many bullets as possible. Also great for spamming through smokes. Also great for when, if you're like me, you just panic and freak out and you can't do anything except shoot like a maniac praying to get a kill. 
And finally, my personal favorite, bursting. Bursting is where you hold down your mouse button just long enough to fire off three or four bullets in quick succession, and then you stop and let your recoil reset. And then you quickly fire off another three or four shots. Then you let your recoil reset, rinse and repeat. This is kind of the best of both worlds. It's what I try to do most of the time when I play. It's really great for medium and long range fights because your three to four bullets remain really, really accurate and you're getting off more shots more quickly than tapping, ultimately doing more damage. So my advice here for new players is get in and practice these different shooting styles. Practice so that these different shooting styles become second nature. You'll begin to just instinctively know how long you need to wait between shots so that your recoil resets. Don't stress too much, it takes time, it takes practice. So, now that you're shooting like a pro, we need to talk about crosshair placement. You'll probably hear this a lot as you continue to watch and learn about Valorant, but what it is is simply where you are placing your crosshair as you walk around the map. Think about it like this. Where is the optimal place to put your crosshair? That's right, the enemy's head. So, when you're moving around the map, when you're peeking corners, you want to make sure that your crosshair is at head height and you want to try and predict where you think enemies might be. Here, I'll give you an example. As I'm moving in to take hookah control, this little room here is called hookah, I might be thinking, hmm, where might an enemy be standing if they were to be defending hookah? So I keep my crosshair focused on these specific spots as I move in and peek corners and I'm expecting someone to be standing there ready to simply click my mouse button and shoot them in the head. I hope that makes sense. The great thing about crosshair placement is that you can be practicing this literally all the time. Every single moment of every single game, you should be thinking where is my crosshair and where should it be? And just give yourself gentle reminders to keep it at head height and put it where you think enemies might be. This also takes practice. It's a really hard skill to develop, but this is really, really important. So keep practicing. Now, here's an important one. And you're not gonna like me saying this, but trust me when I say, this is the single most important piece of advice that I can give you. The problem is, this one is going to make you a lot worse before it starts making you better. You have to find the right mouse sensitivity for Valorant. And I say for Valorant because it's not like a lot of other games that you may have experience with. Valorant requires a lot of precision and therefore a much, much lower sensitivity than other games. I'll chuck a website in the description which you can use to calculate a thing called your eDPI which is just a calculation based off your mouse's DPI and your in-game sensitivity. But this is what I'm going to tell you. Set your sensitivity to roughly 800 DPI and 0.4 in-game sensitivity, which equates to the equivalent of 320 eDPI. Play on this sensitivity for an entire week and then start adjusting your sensitivity upwards or downwards thereafter based on your own liking. And I know what you're gonna say, but Kelly, Kelly, I'm really good on high sensitivity. I wanna flick and I wanna play like prod and tens. Well, I'll chuck another link in the description that runs through every single pro player's eDPI so you can compare. And trust me when I say, it is a lot harder to play on high sensitivity than it is to play on low sensitivity. If you're running anything above, say, 500 eDPI and you're not already radiant, then your sensitivity is too high. And I understand, I was like you once. I made the transition from high sense to low sense many years ago, and I also resisted that change. I told myself that I was going to be different. I was going to be a high sense player. But I was honestly only holding myself back from improving sooner. So please, please, please trust me on this one. And a good little litmus test for finding a good sense for you is to focus on a specific dot, to move your character back and forth, left to right, trying to keep your crosshair on that dot. And you should be able to do this from a far distance, a medium distance, and a close distance without too much hassle. 
close distance should be the hardest of the three. And if you're struggling to do it smoothly at far distances, then your sensitivity is simply too high. And here it is, my final piece of advice for the day. Swift play is your friend. I really, really recommend playing Swift play to learn the game as opposed to the other game modes. Why? Because Swift play has the same structure as a normal or ranked game of Valorant, and it's much, much faster. This will help you improve by exposing you to a wide range of situations across a mix of maps and agents. Remember, your game sense is built up by experiencing similar situations over and over and over again until you instinctively learn what to do. Swift play, in my opinion, is a great environment for learning the game and developing your game sense, and it's much better than unrated or ranked. So don't sleep on Swift play. I highly recommend it for new players. All right, as always, that's enough rambling for me today. For those of you out there who have been playing Valorant for a while but have watched this video anyway, what tips did I miss? Please leave your advice in the comments so that all of our newcomers can continue reading and learning from this little awesome community we have here on YouTube. Thanks again for all of your continued support. I'll see you all in a few days. Thanks. One enemy remaining. Don't worry, I got us. That's a, that's a radio play. Come on, Silver. I mean, Cypher, come defuse it. Be part of the team. Yeah. My thanks. Spike.